Rebirth, Degenerate Slave Abuses Tyrant, Chapter 26, As Expected. As they stepped into the deeper parts of the bamboo forest, the guards following behind Lo Wei and Emperor Xing Wu shouted. There's someone there. Lo Wei could also see a wavering figure in front of them, hidden between the bamboos. As the lanterns lit up, an old servant was pressed to the ground by two guards carrying sabers. Your Imperial Majesty, Jia Fu. The head eunuch of the Hall of Eternal Light was also accompanying them. He only took one look at this old servant before telling Emperor Xingwu, this is an old, close servant of Her Imperial Highness, Consort Liu. At this, the old servant shook like a leaf in the wind and almost fainted. What's in that? Basket. Lo Wei pointed at the basket beside the old servant. Is she out here digging up bamboo shoots for food? Emperor Xingwu pointed. A guard approached to check the basket. As he opened the package wrapped in black silk within the basket, the contents startled him enough to make him take a few steps back. Under the light of the lanterns, everyone present saw what was inside the package that the guard had opened. Unbelievably. It was the remains of a fetus. Lo Wei shouted, then quickly, covered his mouth with his hands, glancing towards the emperor with a fearful expression. Don't be scared. Emperor Xingwu knew that Luo Wei had been frightened and pulled the kid into his arms. Giving orders to the guards behind him, you too. Escort young master Luo back to the Hall of Eternal Light. Why your imperial majesty? Luo Wei's tone had completely changed. Don't be scared. Nothing happened. The emperor's face was dark. But he still comforted Luo Wei with a gentle voice. Wei. Er, you go back first and wait for me. Okay, be good. Luo Wei was escorted away by the guards. It was only after this that Emperor Xingwu put his hands behind his back and looked down at the old serve. And, laying face down on the ground, Zhao Fu shouted a question at her. What are you trying to do? The old servant couldn't answer. A guard had already stuffed her mouth with cloth. Fearing that she'd kill herself by biting off her own tongue. Take her back with us, Emperor. Xing Wu said. Then added after a moment of thought, no one is to speak about this with anyone else. This humble servant shall obey this imperial decree. Zhao Fu accepted the command. Luo Wei didn't see Emperor Xing Wu for the rest of the night. He knows that. The emperor must be in the prison complex of the Hall of Eternal Light interrogating that old servant himself. If Luo Wei didn't guess wrong, this old servant would return to the Hall of the Blossoming Beauty and tell Consort Liu that. Everything had been taken care of if questioned about why it took all night. The old servant would find an excuse and say that she heard someone outside the bamboo forest. So she hid for the night before coming back. Emperor Xingwu would want to see how consort. Liu would play the rest of it out. This was a very patient emperor, so he wouldn't burst into a furious rage at the scene but instead was ready to see the ugliest sides of what went on in the deep palace play out in front of him again. When the morning came, Emperor Xingwu arrived at the room Luo Wei stayed in. He sat at Luo Wei's bedside and asked, I heard you couldn't sleep last night. Luo Wei made a face like he wanted to ask, but was afraid to. Emperor Xingwu sighed deeply and spoke in gentle tones where just pretend you didn't see anything that happened last night. Luo Wei quickly nodded. Where? Emperor Xingwu held Luo Wei in his arms. It had nothing to do with you. To be honest, anything that happens in the back. Palace has nothing to do with you. So from now on, just stay by my side and don't worry about anything that happens in the back palace. Understand? Luo Wei answered, cutely. Your humble servant understands. From now on. I won't go anywhere else in. The palace aside from the Hall of Eternal Light. Are you frightened? The Emperor tightened his arms around Luo Wei, where? I'll show you all of it. Show me all of what? Luo Wei asked. Emperor Xingwu answered. I'll show you all the ugly. Things that people stoop down to in this world. Luo Wei shook his head hard. But the Emperor said, where? Your father protected you too well. But you'll have to grow up someday. Last night. Emperor Xingwu almost died from anger while interrogating that old servant from the Hall of the Blossoming Beauty. He was disappointed. 
but it wasn't out of his expectations. He'd seen all the plotting under and over the table in these years as emperor. It was only one. The most vicious side of humanity showed itself to him again that he understood something. He couldn't protect the son he'd had with Lozi Jin forever. Lozi Kyu couldn't either. Luo Wei must have the ability to protect himself. Luo Jin had hoped that the father and son would never meet. Of course she had, because this back palace was a killing field where blood ran like rivers. Why would she ever want her son to sink himself into a place like this? Never having a chance to be spared of this life, but see, Jin, in his heart, Emperor Xing was said to his deceased lover, Wei'er needs to grow up someday. He doesn't know how treacherous people could be. How else would you want him to exist in this world? Did you think that the senior chancellor's estate was outside of all this strife? Rebirth, Degenerate Slave Abuses Tyrant, Chapter 27. Today, Shangxi brought a basket of seasonal fruits to the Hall of Eternal Light for Luo Wei, a reward from Luo Ziyi, the Empress. How is her Imperial Majesty, Luo Wei half sat and half lounged, in a rocking chair, under the circular window in his bedroom? Her Imperial Majesty is doing well, Shangxi answered, then stepped a little closer to Luo Wei, speaking quietly, young master. Should we let Her Imperial Majesty know about this? Don't you do anything. Luo Wei was gazing out the window, also quiet in his voice. Just sit by and watch. Shang Shi's expression carried a sense of anxiety. But Her Imperial Majesty is planning to go see Consort Liu at the Hall of the Blossoming. Beauty, Luo Wei smiled lightly. Don't worry. Andy isn't a good actress. If we told her everything, there'd be no show for us to watch. Young master, don't worry. Luo Wei reached for a green olive, playing with it in his hands, don't they? Say that the weaker a woman is, the greater the man's desire to protect her. It's going to be fine. Yes, this humble servant understands. Sheng Shi guessed that Luo Wei had already planned everything out. You may excuse yourself. And thank her. Imperial Majesty for me. Luo Wei watched the storm clouds gathering at the edges of the sky, saying, Looks like it's going to rain. Everything happened like last time, three days later. The Empress went to the Hall of the Blossoming Beauty too. Visit the Overseer of the Back Palace, Consort Liu. It was on this day, close to midnight, that the head eunuch of the Hall of the Blossoming Beauty came to the Hall of Eternal Light to make a report. Consort Liu had miscarried. Emperor Xing Wu went to the Hall of the Blossoming Beauty immediately, only returning after daybreak, face dark as a stormy sea. After that, gossip spread from the palace that the Empress had gone to see Consort Liu and gifted her herbal. Broth that was supposed to be good for protecting the pregnancy. The gossip went that Consort Liu had lost her child on that very night after she drank the herbal broth, Your Imperial Majesty. Luo Wei looked like he wanted to defend the Empress against this injustice. Don't worry, but Emperor Xing Wu was calm, comforting Luo Wei. I know what's going on. You just watch. The Empress wanted to see the Emperor, but the Emperor would not see her. Luo Ziqiu wanted to request an audience with the Emperor, but the Emperor also declined. This time, the rumors about the Empress poisoning Consort Liu to cause her miscarriage became even more rampant. Two days later, the Empress Dowager arrived at the Hall of the Gracious Phoenix and ordered an immediate search. Discovering a forbidden item in the palace, Saffron won. When Emperor Xingwu and Luo Wei arrived at the Hall of Longevity, where the Empress Dowager resided, almost all of the consorts and concubines from the back palace were present. The Empress Dowager looked enraged as she sat on the central throne, Consort Liu who just lost her child, sat at the Empress Dowager's lower right while Long Zhuan stood beside her. But the Empress was on her knees, bowing down at the Empress Dowager's feet as she sobbed. Luo Wei made a move as if he wanted to go and help her up, but Emperor Xing Wu stopped him. As the Empress Dowager saw Luo Wei, her express grew even worse. Your Imperial Majesty, why did you bring him here? She pointed at Luo Wei. Asking the emperor your humble servant bows for her imperial majesty the empress dowager. 
Luo Wei paid his respects to the Empress Dowager. She didn't even look at him and only made a noise of disapproval, awkwardly looking around. Luo Wei didn't know whether to kneel or stand. Luo Wei, Emperor Xing Wu spoke up. Come stand behind me. At this, Long Zhuan felt that something was slightly off. What is all this? Emperor Xing was sat at the Empress Dowager's left as he asked. The Empress Dowager answered, Consort Liu miscarried all of a sudden. Should I not investigate and see what happened? Emperor Xing Wu replied, Then has my imperial mother found anything? The Empress Dowager spoke, Why don't you ask your Empress? Ask her why. She had saffron in her palace, imperial mother. The kneeling Empress cried as she spoke, I don't know. The Empress Dowager pressed. You're saying you don't know about something that was found in your own part of the palace. Do you think that? I've become a fool in my old age, that I'm just trying to stir up nonsense, Imperial Mother. The Empress was startled and frightened at the same time, crying so hard that she couldn't even speak. At this point, Consort Liu spoke up, her voice, weak and feeble, Imperial Mother. This has nothing to do with my older sister. I'm sure of it. Please, don't blame her. The Empress Dowager looked at Consort Liu. Her eyes full of pity and protectiveness. Are you really such a fool? She's just taking advantage of your kindness. Imperial Mother, Consort Liu knelt down as well, please. Don't let your anger affect your health. Your humble daughter is sure that her older sister didn't do this. She wouldn't hurt me like this. Imperial Mother, Consort Liu shed tears as she spoke, like a pear blossom drenched in the rain, drawing on the sympathies of everyone who could see her. Footnotes 1. Saffron Eating excessive amounts of saffron during pregnancy can cause contractions and thus is harmful to pregnancies, though the name is similar. Saffron and safflower are two different things, though sometimes safflower is used as a cheap alternative of saffron. Earlier in the translation, Wu Wei in the past life spread rumors about safflowers, and it's uncertain if he was just stupid back then or if the author meant the same thing. Translator's notes, DD double updates today. I have a busy weekend coming up and might not be update every day this weekend, so I thought it would be nice to do a double update today. Sorry it's on such a cliffhanger, but trust in the emperor to see through it all tilled, tilled. Rebirth, degenerate slave abuses tyrant. Chapter 28, Juaner. Are you not going to help your consort mother one up? The Empress Dowager looked like she wanted to help consort Liu up herself. But instead she spoke to Long Juan, who was still standing. How can you let her kneel in her condition? Imperial mother. But consort Liu wouldn't stand, pleading with the Empress Dowager. Please have mercy on my elder sister, the Empress. If not, I'd rather die here kneeling, you little fool. The Empress Dowager's pity for consort Liu showed on her face. Why can't you see through this? Consort Liu wept. The Empress and I have always been close like sisters. I don't believe she would hurt me, Imperial Mother. It's my own bad. Luck, it was me who hurt this little prince, Imperial Mother. This has nothing to do with my older sister. The best actor in the world could probably only match the level of Consort Liu. The prince had clearly been a princess. She clearly wanted nothing more than to watch the Empress die, but begged for mercy on her as if they were sisters. Luo Wei threw a look at the Empress, who aside from crying, did more crying. She was obviously being wronged, but she couldn't even say a single word in her defense. How could an empress like this do battle and win against consort Liu? At this, Luo Wei couldn't stop a sneer from reaching his lips. This was truly a great play. As Long Zhuan watched the momentary sneer on Luo Wei's face, he suddenly realized what was happening. If his father really didn't believe the empress, then why did he bring Luo Wei with him? Did he want to teach Luo Wei a lesson? No, that wasn't it, consort mother. Don't Long Zhuan wanted to stop his birth mother from acting out the rest of this play, but he only let out a part of a sentence before stopping himself. If he showed himself, then that meant he knew the truth behind all of it. 
Long Zhuan subconsciously glanced towards the sitting emperor, but only managed to see his father's frigid expression. Zhuaner is begging for you to get up too, but the Empress Dowager only cared about Consort Liu and was focused on her getting up. Emperor Xing would never thought that Consort Liu, Liu Qingch, was a woman as devious as this, and he had actually shared a bed with the woman, raised children with her. Emperor Xing Wu felt as if he'd been blind all this time, as if he'd been cheated. That feeling made him wish he could kick this woman to death and stop her pretenses, but he wouldn't. Wu Wei could feel the rage from Emperor Xing Wu, but even he knows that Xing Wu wouldn't do anything to consort Liu today. The skill of a good emperor was to find an opposing balance. That's why the palace had Wu Ziyi as empress. But the head of the back palace was consort Liu. In court, there was the senior chancellor, the junior chancellor, and grand marshal. There were loyal ministers and treacherous ministers. There were good people and also bad people. Every single force of power needed to reach a kind of equilibrium. And it was this equilibrium that kept the emperor's throne steady. If the Liu family lost power, who would reign in the powers of the Wu family? Wu Wei stood behind the emperor and watched. The emperor thought he didn't know the ugliness in the world, but he'd already seen through it all. Where, after watching this scene play out for a while, Emperor Xing Wu finally opened his mouth and spoke to Wu Wei behind him. Go help your aunt up. Understood. Wu Wei quickly stepped down and dragged the empress up by the hand without minding whether she wanted to stand or not. Your Imperial Majesty. The Empress Dowager was angry beyond belief, asking the Emperor in an accusatory tone, What are you doing? Emperor Xing Wu replied, This has nothing to do with the Empress. What did you say? The Empress Dowager nearly jumped out of her seat. I ordered the Empress to keep those flowers, Emperor. Xing Wu said, expressionless, Even that herbal concoction was something I ordered the Empress to deliver to consort Liu. Does my imperial mother suspect that I've harmed my own child? Silence. For a moment, the Empress Dowager didn't know how she should react. Consort Liu's face suddenly paled. Her expression turned to one of terror. The Empress watched Emperor Xing Wu with tearful eyes, her face full of gratitude. The Emperor told a lie for her. The consorts all stood with their heads down. None of them dared to even speak a single word. Long Zhuan subconsciously held his fists tight, but also kept his head down, silent. Emperor Xing Wu addressed Luo Wei, Weir. Take your aunt back to the Hall of the Gracious Phoenix. Luo Wei paid his respects to the Empress Dowager, frozen on her seat, and half forced the immobile Empress out of the hall. Footnotes 1. Consort Mother. There's a distinction between mothers in the back palace. The Empress is Empress Dowager was mother to the nation, and thus the imperial mother to all. In the original text there is a distinction between the terms of address for the Empress and the mother of Longjuan, who is just a consort. This is another way to differentiate them, and to remind the consort of her position as someone who is below the Empress and not the official wife of the Emperor, since the Emperor mentions it later on in the next chapter. The distinction was made in the translation. Translator's notes. Sorry for being away. For so long, it was the long weekend and I went away with family without internet sad face got pulled into a lot of activities to so I had no time. When I came back there was a bunch of work drama. And ended up not having the time or energy to. Translate. The normal schedule will resume and I hope that I can add in a few extra updates in the next few days. Thanks for being so patient. So patient. Rebirth. Degenerate slave abuses tyrant. Chapter 29. Saffron is banned in the back palace. Why would you give this to the Empress? The Empress Dowager asked as she regained her composure. Imperial Mother must know that it can help in preserving. Beauty was all Emperor Xing Wu said in response. The Empress Dowager spoke up again. This is a palace rule. You broke it just because it preserves beauty. The emperor looked at the empress dowager. Imperial mother, the empress is the mistress of the back palace. Were you obeying the rules when you treated her like that? She's my empress and the mother of the nation. Are you making an attempt to embarrass me? 
The Empress Dowager finally couldn't sit still anymore. She stood and sneered at the Emperor. So now I can't even control my own daughter-in-law. If the Empress did anything wrong, I will hold her accountable myself. It has nothing to do with Imperial Mother. The Emperor sneered right back at her. Wu, the Empress. Dowager's face flushed red. She pointed at Emperor Xingwu, unable to speak. And all of you, Emperor Xingwu cast his gaze over the consorts in the Grand Hall. You all stood while the Empress kneeled. What kind of rules are you obeying? This put the fear in all the consorts in the hall. And every one of them fell to their knees. Get out of my sight and go back to your own places. A Emperor Xingwu shouted with anger. All of you can kneel for a night as punishment. The consorts were shaking. Like leaves now, each shuffling out on their knees. Even though Emperor Xingwu was seldom gentle with them, he never got this angry at them either. Emperor Xingwu then looked at Consort Liu. Still prostrated on the ground, his expression softened a little. You're not in good health right now, go rest for now. It makes me glad to know that you have a deep sisterly bond with the Empress. Why your consort humbly obeys your command? Consort Liu's voice shook. Your consort humbly thanks your Imperial Majesty. At this point, she was no longer able to figure out Emperor Xingwu's actions today. Was it because he trusted the Empress deeply? Or was it because he knew how she'd been trying to plot against the Empress? Her heart was full of fear and suspicion, but she wouldn't dare show it in front of the Emperor. Long Zhuan, Emperor Xingwu addressed him, after you help your mother back to her hall. Go to the Empress Hall and kneel there. One of them is your Imperial Mother, the other is your consort mother. Can you not distinguish between them if you're trying to observe filial piety one? Can't you at least figure out who you're supposed to direct it at? Long Zhuan knelt as he spoke. Your son understands his wrongdoings? Emperor Xingwu thought Long Zhuan's little outburst earlier. He speculated that perhaps maybe Long Zhuan also knew the truth behind the matter. And with that thought he kicked Long Zhuan over on the ground. Get out of my sight, your imperial. Majesty, the Empress Dowager shouted, Are you doing this so you can make me watch? Emperor Xingwu turned to look at his own birth mother. I'm the master of this empire and imperial mother. He sneered, I won't forget that your surname is Rei. Mutu, Rei Mu, a clan with hundred years history, yet they've been wiped out along with Marquis and Gore. The only person left of this clan was this Empress Dowager at the Hall of Longevity. The Empress Dowager bit her lips hard, almost enough to draw blood. This was her, Raymuan's birth son. She thought of everything to make him emperor. But now this was all she was getting in return. Imperial mother, you should rest. Emperor Xingwu finished with this and turned to leave. Why are you keeping Luo away with you? But the Empress Dowager opened her mouth again and asked suddenly, where is intelligent with great potential? Someone who can be shaped into something great. Emperor Xingwu answered, I'm hoping that he'll be there too. Support the crown prince when the time comes. Can't the people in the imperial study tutor him? Can't his father tutor him? Why does he need stay in the hall of eternal light and burden your imperial majesty so? The Empress Dowager smiled coldly. I feel like I recognize his face when I saw him just now. Emperor Xingwu's face was without emotion. We is one of the Luo family's sons and my nephew through the Empress. Is it wrong for me to want to tutor him myself? You have no intention of getting close to your own princes, your own flesh and blood, the Empress said sternly, but you somehow want to go and play uncle with Luo Wei. Is the Luo family not powerful enough yet? How much more favor are you planning to give them? Emperor Xingwu chuckled grimly. What great advice, Imperial Mother. I know not to let the Luo family become the Reimu clan of yesteryear. You can rest assured that this won't happen. The Empress Dowager watched as the Emperor left. She wanted to cry but couldn't manage to do it, only managing to let out a great laugh. This was retribution. This was retribution for all the endless people she'd heard in the back palace over the years. Footnotes 1. Filial piety, the deference and respect that 
A person owes to their parents as a child. The original text doesn't seem to clarify what the emperor meant by distinguishing between the imperial mother and the consort mother. It may be because at some point, Long Zhuan misspoke and called his mother imperial mother by accident, or it may be that as a prince of the palace, he should always show more respect, love, and deference to the empress. Since she is the rightful mother of the nation, too, Ray Mill, a compound surname, in China, some surnames are made up of two characters instead of one. These are rare and more often than not originate from non-Han Chinese. This translation chooses to separate each proper name by itself, which may cause some confusion when it comes to compound surnames. To make clear, Ray Mu Wan, the Empress Dowager's surname is Ray Mu. Her name is Wan. Translator's Notes this chapter felt so good. Even though the emperor didn't go straight up against the consort, he showed the empress dowager what's. What? Thank y'all for all the support again. It makes me really happy to read all of your comments. And I'm going to do my best to keep up the speed of the translation. Translation. Rebirth. Degenerate slave abuses tyrant. Chapter 30. The night's rain came suddenly. At dusk, the light from the sun still cast beautiful colors over the sky. But a heavy rain fell as soon as the sun set. Long Zhuan was still straight-backed as he kneeled in the courtyard of the Hall of the Gracious Phoenix, being drenched by the rain without anything to shield him. He didn't know how much time had passed. But the rain over had stopped suddenly. Long Zhuan raised his head and was startled when he saw Wu Wei standing beside him, holding an umbrella. Wu Wei had just eaten dinner inside the Hall of the Gracious Phoenix. The Crown Prince, Long Yu, wasn't in the capital city. So Emperor Xing Wu summoned the third prince, Long Xing, and the sixth prince, Long Hao, to accompany the Empress. Luo Wei was also the nephew to the Empress. And in this little family gathering inside the Grand Hall, they interacted with a sense of peace and happiness. SS, you don't have to do this, Long Zhuan told. Wu Wei, who held the umbrella over him, Wu Wei replied, Your Imperial Highness is being exposed to the rain. How could I sit comfortably with a roof over my head? Long Zhuan said, You're no longer my study companion. There's no need for you to pretend anymore. Wu Wei sighed, Spring weather is still rather chilly and rains are frequent. Is your Imperial Highness not cold? Your Imperial Highness might see me as a mere pig or a dog but I still have heart enough to help shield your Imperial Highness a little from the rain. But I also know that if I had suffered like this in the past, your Imperial Highness would have no heart to treat me the same way. As he spoke, Wu Wei draped a thick coat over Long Zhuan's shoulders. It was still warm. Long Zhuan watched Luo Wei. The light of the lanterns was dim. In the heavy downpour and in this little space under the bamboo umbrella, a Wei's face was blurry and indistinct. Hidden by a stree shadow, Long Zhuan only realized then that Wu Wei stood upwind from him and was really guarding him from the cold wind. He suspected that this person was only pretending, but Long Zhuan's heart still warmed. He was truly cold. Both his body and his heart were frozen. It was a good thing that this person was here now. At the very least, he was no longer completely alone. Your Imperial Highness must forgive me, Luo Wei said. His Imperial Majesty forbade me to kneel. Long Zhuan responded, You did nothing wrong, why would you kneel? Luo Wei didn't want to come at first, but he couldn't just let a prince kneel in the rain while he enjoyed a feast inside, warm and protected, conversing and laughing. So Wu Wei requested leave from the emperor to come outside and hold an umbrella for Long Zhuan. When he saw Long Zhuan as he stood on the steps, there was a moment when he felt that Long Zhuan was truly lonely, all by himself, kneeling back straight in the downpour. Emperor Xing Wu was not good to him, but in the next moment, Wu Wei felt his heart go cold and harden. Why was he feeling sorry for someone who wronged him? The winner takes the crown and the loser bears the blame on the day he was crowned. Did a winner like Long Zhuan ever take pity on a loser like him? One kneeling, one standing. The two of them couldn't find anything else to say to each other. It stayed this way until late into the night. 
the head eunuch of the Hall of Eternal Light, Jia Fu, finally came to deliver word from the emperor, Long Zhuan, has been allowed to go. The ground is slippery. Wu Wei saw Long Zhuan off. Be careful, your imperial highness. Long Zhuan's knees were swollen from the punishment. Fu Lai held him up as he walked off without looking back. Young master, you should. Hurry back to the Hall of Eternal Light for some rest. Zhao Fu put on a smile for Wu Wei. His Imperial Majesty has already ordered me to prepare some hot water. The young master can have a warm bath and get a good night's rest. Wu Wei turned his head, looking towards the Hall of the Egracious Phoenix. His Imperial Majesty has decided to take his rest here tonight with Her Imperial Majesty. Zhao Fu quickly added. Wu Wei nodded with a smile. Please. Jiao Fu turned to lead them off. Mister, thank you for going through such trouble for me. Wu Wei thanked him. Jiao Fu's smile crinkled the corners of his eyes. Wu Wei had always been polite with him. To a point that was almost shocking to him. But Jiao Fu didn't think that low. Wei was just putting on false pretenses. The young master was always well-mannered to just the right amount, making even an eunuch like him feel a sense of dignified respect. As the head eunuch of the Hall of Eternal Light, there was no shortage of people trying to get on his good side. But how many of those people truly and honestly respected him like this? Translator's notes: A double update for tonight. For tonight.